All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the Everything College Bowl podcast. They'll be doing my preview and prediction for UCF versus Tulane, a ranked matchup in the AAC this Saturday in New Orleans from Yulman Stadium, Tulane, minus one and a half, ESPN 2, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. And then all time in the series, you know, UCF leads 9-2. to two. They've won the last four. Look at the UCF offense. John Rice Plumley. you know, he left two weeks ago against Cincinnati, played in the first half, did not play in the second half, and did not play against Memphis this past weekend. He's currently day-to-day with some injuries. Uh, you know, Mikey Keeney, he was pretty solid on the road here against Memphis. Three touchdowns completed, over 78%. Did have one pick, but overall he was very efficient, very effective for them. So he played quite well. Uh, but Plum, he's a complete game-changer at quarterback. You know, he does have six interceptions this year, only 11 touchdowns. Uh, you know, almost 1,900 yards passing, but you know his avail- ability to make plays as a vertical runner uh, is a big part of this offense. You know, he did it at Ole Miss. He's doing it here. 532 yards rushing, seven touchdowns. He's just incredibly fast, very smart, elegant runner, completing about 64% as well, you know, about nine yards per attempt. John Ross Plumley, you know, uh, I'd say he's pretty much the heart and soul of this offense. Of course, they did put up 35 points there on the road against Memphis still, so, um, you know, his absence wasn't as big as you would have assumed, but uh, he's a player you want on the field, no doubt, especially going on the road here against a good defense. Looking at wide receiver, Kobe Hudson starting to finally get involved these past couple weeks. He's up to 418 yards and four touchdowns, a team high 18 yards per reception. The last four weeks, he's got four plus receptions and 70 plus yards in those games. So he's finally getting involved after not doing much early on in the year, battled some health. So he's finally healthy. That makes this offense really dangerous because Javon Baker, a transfer from Bama, 36 grabs, 500 plus yards, three touchdowns. You know, him and then John Ryan O'Keefe, who was their leading receiver last year. You know, he's back here with 49 grabs, 536, and four scores. More of a possession pass catcher. Average is only about 11 yards per catch. Um, but they're pretty deep there at, at wide receiver. You know, they've got three really impressive re- uh, options. Uh, the emergence of R.J. Harvey, though, running back, 532 yards. That ties Plumlee for the team high. Four touchdowns. You know, only on 72 attempts, too, though. You know, he's really emerged these past couple of weeks. As their lead running back, uh, mainly against Cincinnati and Memphis, he had 151 against Memphis, 84, and two touchdowns against uh, the Bearcats. Uh, but overall this year, he's been a very sound option at running back. They're starting to finally turn to him a little bit more and give him some more opportunities. That's really good. You know, a bit undersized, a 5'8", 195. Um, but this is a deep backfield. Johnny Richardson hasn't found the end zone this year. But he has 300 yards almost rushing. Isaiah Bowser, you know, he's a bruiser, 6'1", 220, 500-plus yards rushing, only 3.9 yards per carry, uh, but 11 touchdowns. So they have a nice uh, dual, dual threat group now. You know, Richardson's role has been kind of replaced by Harvey, but this offense is operating very well because you throw in John Ross Plumley's legs and, you know, 240 yards per game on the ground for this offense. That's where they like to make their money is by running the ball, explosive plays on the ground as a team, 5.3 yards per carry. That is just phenomenal. You know, this is a pretty good offense in terms of balance, I'd say. They got deep receivers, nice weapons on the ground. The quarterback's obviously going to do a lot for them. Averaging about 36 points per contest, right there around that 500-yard mark as well. Uh, I love this offense. They're terrific. Yeah, I'd like to see them put up some more points per game, but you know, overall right now they're in the thick of things. They're in con- you know, they're in contention if they win this game for a New Year's Six bid, so UCF's obviously performing very well on the offensive side of the ball. Looking at the Tulane offense, you know, a big reason why this team was you know surprisingly very poor last year was not just because of a bad defense, but you know an offense that really wasn't all that great either. Michael Pratt was not very good last year. You know, he's been very solid for them this season, a little north of 1,800 yards, 14 touchdowns, four picks, 67% comp rate, 251 and five touchdowns on the ground, 6'3", 220. He's got great size. Uh, you know, he's a leader at this point. You know, he's been around about three years now. Pratt, he's a guy that's leading this offense tremendously. You know, the emergence of Tajay Spears, though, has been really, you know, we talk about John Rice Plumley Spears, I'd say he's the heart, entire heartbeat of this offense, 745 rushing, 5.5 yards per attempt, 10 touchdowns. 17 grabs, 209 yards. You know, he had a game-winning touchdown reception against Houston. He also had 85 yards in that game. And the week prior, he had 74. Hasn't did much the last four weeks. In the last month, he's been kind of absent as a pass catcher. But, you know, he's certainly uh, – that's a part of his game. They can unleash at any moment. 5'11", 195. This guy's got a lot of elusiveness, a lot of speed. I love Tajay Spears. He's phenomenal. Uh, the green wave rushing attack. You know, it's not as strong as the uh, Knights, you know, 180 yards per game. And they're pretty deep, though. It's a lot of freshmen, though, on this offense to get involved. Uh, also had a Pratt at quarterback. And they're pretty deep, a wide receiver, too, with experience. But in terms of running the ball, it's nothing but freshmen, really, to get involved in the backfield outside of Spears. Uh, Shea Watt, Deuce Watts, you know, these guys are very similar numbers. Uh, 20 grabs, 
21 receptions, uh, you know, respectively for them. They both have 350 plus yards, 19 yards per catch for Shea Wyatt, uh, Jaquan Jackson, Tyreek James. He's a really good tight end. He's got a team high five touchdowns, which is tied with Watts actually. Day Day McDougal as well. Um, they're pretty deep at receiver. You know, you got seven different guys. They have 17 plus receptions this year. Six of them being wide receivers that have 20 plus receptions. So they dish it out a good bit. Lawrence Keys, another one. Uh, you know, this is not. An offense that really, you know, has one go-to guy. They really do a good job of spreading it out. You know, Keys, he's the transfer from Notre Dame. Um, really undersized. They do not have a lot of uh, size one bit. You know, it's a lot of guys that are 5'10", 190 or shorter. Uh, you know, Deuce is 6'2 himself, so if you need him to come up with some jump balls, he can do it. And Shea, he's 6'1", you know, he's a little bit taller. But for the most part, this is not an offense that's built with size one bit. You know, Pratt's probably their biggest guy at quarterback. And then, of course, I got like their offensive line. Both of them the line this year has been pretty solid especially for Tulane, they've been stepping up. Uh, you know, this is an offense that's very good. You know, they protect the football. Uh, they have some balance of their own. They're not as eloquent, I would say. Um, they're more modest in terms of balance, but this is an offense. They know what they want to do. They want to run the football, and they want to spread it around in the passing attack. Uh, it's an you know, offense that really doesn't exactly live off big plays, but they do. Uh, they certainly do, um, you know, go downfield a good bit uh, with some nice balance. So, Tulane, this is a very sound offensive unit for the Green Wave. We have the UCF defense. This is a unit that's really impressed this year. Under 19 points per contest allowed, 361 in terms of yards per game allowed. Really good run defense. You know, this is a unit that replaced a good bit in the front seven. Um, but you look at Trevon Morris Brash. He stepped up here at defensive end. He's got 10 tackle for loss. Uh, you know, five sacks. He's got a forced fumble, 6'2", 245 coming off the edge. As a team, they have 16 sacks. You know, that's not a great number by any means, but this is certainly a unit that's, I think, pretty serviceable. Josh Salazar, the other defensive end, he's got two sacks. Um, they had four sacks against Cincinnati, not against Memphis. Um, they only had one against DCU in that loss, so they're certainly very inconsistent. They also had four against Georgia Tech, so, I mean, a lot of their, these sack numbers just seem to be coming off one game. It's a very inconsistent unit, um, but they've been held not very well against the run, only giving up 120 yards per game, and, uh, you know, in that front. 149 they gave up against Memphis. Completely stonewalled Cincinnati. It's a really big offensive line. Uh, 35 yards rushing. You know, that's a pretty good effort. You know, at home they were able to do that. And, you know, a very good duo from ECU. They had 147 turnovers really killed them in that game. Uh, ECU, they're pretty good at running the ball in that one. Other than that, though, for the most part, it's been a very stout run defense. Uh, you know, it's a rotational like defensive front, I would say, here for UCF. Uh, Anthony Montevallo at defensive tackle, Ricky Barber, some guys that get involved. Uh, I do like the emergence of Jason Johnson here at linebacker. You know, Tatum Bethune departed after a big-time season for them last year, and he's had no problem filling those shoes. You know, far and away the high tackler on the team of 85. The next closest is Jeremiah Jean Baptiste, 40 less tackles for him on the year. So Jason Johnson's been a big part of this unit for them. Secondary play, I'd say, for UCF hasn't been as strong. I do think this secondary is a pretty good unit, though. They only give them a 58% completion rate. You know, the, in terms of yards, though, they have had some tough games. They've, give, they've given up, uh, you know, 300-plus in, in three different occasions, rather, 298 against Cincinnati. I think they held it very well against that passing attack, though. They had 46 attempts uh, in that one. They held them in check, I'd say, for the most part. Uh, you know, it was only 6.5 yards per attempt. Uh, almost gave up 300 to Seth Hennigan in Memphis there. They did snag two of their four interceptions on the year, though, in that one. This is not a defense that makes many turnovers one bit. Like I said, they had only two picks coming into that game. Devon Wilson, he has three of the team's four interceptions as safety. He's a ball hawk for them, big-time playmaker. like what he brings to the table. You know, um, this is not a secondary, though. It's really going to wow you. I think they do a great job of not giving up big plays, keeping most of the things in front of them. Uh, you know, top to, top to bottom, UCF defense is very interesting. Uh, I think that they're, they've are they been playing very good. You know, Devontae Brown stepped up at corner for them. Uh, of course, Johnson, Morris Brash. You know, they got some great individual players. They got some interesting depth that's really made up of a lot of freshmen or transfers. Um, you know, the defense have been playing very good this year, especially against some impressive offenses. So, you know, i got to give them credit where it is due. But this is not a unit that's really going to blow you over the top outside of a handful of guys that have been impact uh, performers and producers for them. Much of the same is the story for Tulane's defense. They give up about 17 points per game, under 308 yards per contest. They also have a defense that's, you know, really strong against the run. Um, I say they're much better in the secondary, too. Look at this run defense. They have allowed 100-plus in five straight games, but they've yet to – well, they allowed a 200-yard rusher against UMass in week one. They had almost 60 attempts, so, you know, from a yards-per-carry standpoint, I think they're very good in that one. 
They've only allowed four rushing touchdowns. That's going to be interesting. Now you go against a bruiser, Isaiah Bowser, who has 11 on the year, a team that runs the ball very well. How they respond this year, it's you know interesting to see because this defensive line, they've had some big replacements over the years. Patrick Jenkins, though, at defensive tackle, he's really good. He's a guy that can really step up in this game and take control. Darius Hodges has not been as you know impactful as he was last year. He had like 16 tackles for loss. Nowhere near as productive this year. Um, this is still an impact player they're going to count on in these big games. It's a defense that I'd say has a nice blend of youth and experience, especially in this front seven. I think they have a good deal of experience. You look at this linebacking duo of Dorian Williams and Nick Anderson. They've played a lot of football together, and these guys are phenomenal. They're really good at getting into the backfield. They're great in coverage. Williams with 71 stops. Anderson has 69. You know, this is a really impressive duo here, 5'11", 530. You know, you don't usually see linebackers, uh, you know, with that interesting type of size from Anderson. But this is, this is a great duo, you know, 6'2", 230 for Williams. Uh, four sacks for him, six and a half TFL, four pass breakups. I really love these guys. I think they're going to do a great job in this ball game. Uh, safety, Macon Clark, five TFL for him, two picks. He's a good ball hawk. He's got two forced fumbles. You know, this is a guy that does a lot for them also. Some great individual players, you know, I guess on the UCF defense, but Sam on this one as well. I like Jarius Monroe. He's been stepping up for them in the secondary. Uh, you know, this is a pass defense that's been very impressive this season. One of the better units in college football, no doubt, allowing only, you know, they're allowing a 60% completion rate, but they do have eight interceptions. And from a yards per game standpoint, they're not giving up a whole lot. You know, 180 pass yards per game. Uh, they did give up 300 plus against Memphis in a game that they allowed 28 points in. You know, UCF had three touchdowns. They were unable to get any interceptions in that one. Um, they were very good against Power 5 schools. You know, they beat Can a ranked Kansas State team early on in the year, only gave it 150 through the air on that one. Held ECU in check, I'd say, a good bit. Held them to 5.5 yards per attempt, 6.4 yards per attempt on the year. So this is a secondary. It's not going to give up a whole lot of big plays. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do against the run because that's obviously where UCF's going to try and win the game. And that's going to be a phenomenal matchup to watch in the trenches here in this one. Looking at team comparisons, you know, it's two different tails, I'd say, here on offense. UCF has the edge everywhere. Quarterback like John Ross plumbing over Pratt. I think their backfield's much deeper. Uh, I love Tajay Spears. He's phenomenal, but I think the duo of Bowser and Harvey, right now they're going to get the edge in that one. Wide receiver, they're pretty deep in their own right for Tulane, but there's three guys that are much better than everyone on Tulane's roster, I'd say. For UCF at wide receiver, I do think they have some nice, uh, you know, Wyatt and Watts. Those guys have been around a long time, and they're pretty impressive in their own right, but UCF has the edge there. Offensive line, both of them have been pretty solid, you know, all together, but I'm going to give Tulane the edge up front on the offensive line defensive line it's really a mixed bag there but i'd say morris brash helps push them over the edge even though hodges uh and jenkins he, these guys are solid you know i think this is maybe a spot where you could call it even on the defensive line uh right now i'm gonna give ucf just a slight edge i'm not really beating on the table about that one um i will beat on the table for the linebacking core of anderson and williams though i think they're far and away better uh than most teams in college football with what they have there and in the secondary also i think is much better a lot better playmaking they perform much better against some of the same offenses as well so this is going to be a great game uh you know looking at final thoughts on the prediction keys to the game establish the run for ucf and get off on third down uh and then for Tulane, find some big plays in the passing game kind of allow those linebackers to back up a good bit allow your running game to work and you know feed tajay spears man this guy's a heck of a playmaker I love watching him all year long um prediction on this one you know being at home i think it's gonna do wonders for tulane i think ucf is probably the better team uh but here at home in new orleans i think tulane's gonna win a low scoring game 26 21 regardless of who the winner is i think we're gonna see a lot more defense than offense in this one um it's gonna be shocking if they can actually hold them in check to 21 points i'll probably be rooting for ucf in this game if i had the pick but right now i think tulane being at home it's gonna be the edge it's a great defense they have two phenomenal linebackers they're gonna be leading the way for them uh, I think they're going to get stuffed for most of the day against the run. And um, I think they'll do a good job of containing this passing attack also. So it's going to be a great game, guys. Can't wait to watch this one. A ranked matchup in the AEC. It's really going to decide a lot of things as we get down to the gritty of things here. Uh, you know, with New Year's Six Bowl selections, you know, about a month away. So this is going to put the winner in the driver's seat. We might even see a rematch in a couple weeks in the title game. It's going to be a great one, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. See you next time.